I had been traveling for days in these barren lands and I had lost all hope. The storm came upon me suddenly and I was swept away. <coughs> Where am I? What is this place? Oh my god. Just kidding, I downloaded the map. Join me while I go from a single block to an entire island. To challenge myself, I will be playing in hardcore mode, so if a mob kills me or I fall off the island, it's all over forever. I'm not looking forward to that. There are 10 phases, some much harder than others, which can spawn a multitude of hostile mobs, but also plenty of friendly animals, which can actually be killed by the blazes in the nether phase, which is honestly a terrible phase. And of course, the last phase is the end. On day one, I obviously started off by breaking the block under me, which actually took a bit of time to regenerate, but don't worry, it was only the first few times. I was just getting the basic resources like wood and dirt, and at one point I got a chest with some saplings in it. This meant I had unlimited wood. Then suddenly, my first companion spawned, a pig, which I named Billy. Billy is a very daring pig, and he likes to live on the edge, so I extended the island a bit. And I'm not sure what he's doing here. I then got a water bucket, which allowed me to place a slab under the infinite block so that I was able to get some gravel. I then got a chest with some hearts on it, and it gave me my first torch. After that, there was an upgrade, and I entered the first phase, which was the plains. That was when Billy's best friend spawned, and I called him Ben. I started getting a lot of animals, like a cow named Susan and a sheep named David. I even got some conjoined chickens, which were quite cute, and I named them Taylor and Tyler. I started getting more and more animals, and I simply couldn't name them anymore. This island was simply turning into a farm, and honestly, I quite like that. I finally got a benevolent gift, and then there was an upgrade. It was actually time for the underground phase. Before starting the second phase, I decided to make an area just for the animals, because they were all living on the edge, and I didn't want them all to fall in the void, like that poor little chicken. I then started planting some saplings and a few seeds I'd got. It was time to start the underground phase. I then upgraded my wooden pickaxe to stone and threw it in the void, which was a bit silly because I could have kept it for fuel. After that, a mushroom cow spawned, which meant I had an unlimited source of food. Suddenly, two zombies spawned, so of course I did the tootsie run and I managed to push one into the void. On day three, I started pushing animals towards their pen, and I also made a hole to make it easier to push enemies into the void. And this method worked quite well. I got a chest with some spruce saplings, which is quite cool because I like spruce wood. A lot of rabbits kept spawning, but they weren't very smart. That evening, I realized that dirt was quite precious, so I replaced it with granite. On day 4, I helped a cow away from the edge, and I realized that some wheat had grown, so I was able to easily bring the animals up. I got some iron, and then two very nice spiders spawned, but I had to kill them because I needed string, and also they would turn hostile at night. Of course, what I dreaded happened. A creeper spawned. Thank god that hole works well. I then got wool from the sheep, and made a bed. That was when I realized that the sheep would need grass, so I started putting some dirt everywhere. After getting a decent chest with a bit of leather, two zombies spawned and they almost killed me, so of course I had to do a tootsie run. Fighting mobs with no armor is quite stressful. Two spiders spawned, so I let them roam about. Once I got a grass block, I stopped mining to let it spread. To pass the time, I started extending the island a bit more. I got a bit of coal and then another creeper spawned. Thankfully, I kicked him in without a problem. 
I then decided to build another very large platform for planting trees and actually for making my farm in the future, but I didn't have enough dirt so I finished it off with wood. On day 6, I arrived at the snowy phase and I got a wolf. I didn't have any bones to tame him yet, so I put him in a little pen, just to be safe. Speaking of the devil, a skeleton spawned the next day. He dropped an iron helmet, but I don't think I had enough bones to tame the wolf yet. I decided to secure the island a little by putting some bushes around the edges. I honestly didn't like that part at all because I was so scared I would fall out of the water source and lose the world forever. Thankfully, it all went okay and I was able to plant all my crops. I then got a white fox, but he was very fast, so I let him run off. Guess who spawned after that? John, from my Let's Play series. The problem with polar bears is that they're really big, so I couldn't just slide by him and push him back, so I filled up the hole and then I was able to safely push him back. John's girlfriend Mary quickly came along and I guess she couldn't live without the love of her life. To get Mary out of danger, I thought, why not get some salmon? You know, um, polar bears love salmon. But guess what? I fished for a bit and I came back and she was actually safe. But she didn't care about the salmon, so yeah. <laughs> On day 8, a wolf spawned, so I tamed him and named him Tom. That's when I saw Mary playing with fire. <laughs> I didn't like that. I even got a map and was able to see what my island looked like. And then I was introduced to the monster parties. And it's basically several different mobs that spawn and like the zombie had a sword and some armor, so that wasn't too great. On day 9, the wandering trader spawned and I checked if he had anything good and then I remembered I didn't have any emeralds, so I killed him. A few moments later, I realized that one of the llamas was actually spitting at one of my wolves. That got me angry, so I decided to kill it, and guess what? I hit a polar bear at the same time. Oh yes, John was not happy, and honestly, I can't blame him. I decided to put him in a little house for him to calm down, and his nose was sticking out, it was kind of cute. Mary felt quite alone, so to cheer her up, I decided to build her a little enclosure. It didn't look nice at all, because I didn't have many blocks to use, but I did my best. After a bit of farming, I went to get poor old John, who had calmed down, and I bought him over to Mary. I then continued mining and these two skeletons spawned and as you can see, it, they totally surprised me. Some of my wolves were attacking them, but then I realized that they were actually killing all the wolves and I felt terrible and angry so I killed them all and there was only my little Tom left. But thankfully, there was actually another wolf. To top it all up, that little fox killed one of my chickens but Thankfully, John and Mary were not having any of it. Later that night, two other foxes spawned and I killed one, but then the other one ran off and it sat and it was just so cute, so I let it live. On day 11, I had finally entered the ocean phase. Catherine the turtle spawned and she was a lazy girl. I loved her immediately, so I decided to build her a little pond where she could swim around. I then met the two friendliest drowned. I killed the first because I thought it would attack me, but the other was really so cool. So guess what? We simply watched the sunset together. How romantic. I knew I would love that phase when I got my first diamond. These tiny fish would spawn and I swear I do not have the reflexes for catching them. I guess elder guardians are not too scary on one block. Then a dolphin spawned and I hated every moment of it. I just didn't know what to do. I was hoping he would fall in my little pond but I guess he didn't. So I made it larger. You can laugh at me for that part. So that fish spawned and I tried to save it and I didn't manage. And guess what? The drop fell down into the void because I hadn't blocked things properly. 
And by the way, Catherine the Turtle, I never saw her again. There was then a monster party warning, so of course I ran away as quick as possible and turned around and it was these drowns, they were just chilling. It was a real party, they were like in the jacuzzi and when I finally got them out of the jacuzzi, they all started dancing, I mean, yeah, I understand the name monster party. But guess what, they had great drops and one even had a trident. And there I'm showing off with the trident, but guess what, I'm not really gonna use it at all. The polar bear enclosure looked awful, so I decided to make a custom tree to try and make it look a bit nicer. John liked it very much and he forgave me for hitting him, and that is very respectable. Catherine the second spawned and I was not going to lose her, so I tried to put a leash on her, but you can't put a leash on turtles. And then I realized my mistake. There was a hole, yes. <laughs> Nevertheless, I continued working on the pond. I was able to save a few fish, so I let them swim around. To my dismay, the white fox had actually killed some of my fish. The day was suddenly better when Catherine III spawned and I brought her immediately to the pond and she really, really liked it. But then she went on the edge, so I decided to put some bushes around. That day, I even started building my house. And I kept checking the pond to see if everyone was okay. On day 16, I continued building my house. I had stripped the spruce logs and I thought it looked awful, so I changed them back. On day 17, another elder guardian spawned, but not for long. And then, it was time for an upgrade. The phase was called Jungle Dungeon, and I got some cute parrots, so I was really looking forward to see what animals would spawn in that phase. These guys were a bit tricky to sit down, but they were really awesome. On day 18, I checked on Catherine III, who was swimming around peacefully. And then, two vexes spawned, and honestly, I despise these little creatures. They're awful, and I mean, if there are two attacking you, they can honestly kill you um, immediately. So, yeah, I ran off. <laughs> I spent the rest of the day working on my house and also planting a bunch of saplings, because I knew I would need the wood at one point. I also fed all the animals, and when the night came, I couldn't sleep in my bed because apparently there was a monster nearby. I decided to go sleep upstairs, and the next morning I realized that there was a witch near my house, so I killed her. That made me think that maybe I should start making a monster spawner to get loads of monster drops. And then I realized that my chests were awful, so messy, so... I spent the rest of the day just putting signs on chests and getting everything sorted out and it was quite boring. And that night I even did a tootsie slide on my bed. The next day I got an ocelot and he really wanted to stay with Mary and John and I thought it was really nice that the younger generation wanted to stay with the older one. To my surprise, a panda spawned. That was very, very cool because I never really meet up with pandas in my normal worlds because they're quite rare. I named that little guy Alex and I saw that he was a bit lost so I built him a little enclosure. On day 20, of course, some vexes spawned, but thankfully after a while they just flew away on their own. I then got some conjoined parrots, which were very, very nice. Are you ready for the worst night ever? So basically, I couldn't sleep because there was a monster nearby, so I checked all around the house and couldn't find anything. And then I remembered the little platform I had made for, for making a mob spawner. Yeah, there were loads of mobs on it. So I tried running over and building a wall, but guess what? The zombies had seen me. <laughs> So I built up little tower and killed them from there and then I was able to do the wall and guess what, a zombie was able to go through because I put some bushes everywhere. So then I decided to go home only to see a creeper and also I had forgotten to close my door. So yeah, I just rushed into the animal farm and spent the night there and there was a spider in my room. <laughs> Thankfully, the next day, everyone had despawned except a few creepers. Trust me, after that, I put torches everywhere. I then started making another platform where I would be putting the horses. 
Of course, I got another monster party, and this time it wasn't just dancing drowned. Also, guess what? Catherine the Third had fallen into the void. To top it up, a nocelot was killing my chickens. That was not the best day, honestly. To finish the day on a good note, I went to see Alex and I started decorating his pen. That night, apparently there was a monster nearby again and I was not taking any risks. <laughs> I just slept outside. I went back to the polar bear pen and I realized that the ocelots had gone and I think they had jumped over because of the custom tree. Yeah, that was a bit sad, but you know, can't control it. Mistakes happen. To brighten up the day, little panda spawn named Josh. And I think he was a bit sick, poor thing. It was nice to know that Alex now had a companion. Once again, there was apparently an invisible monster nearby, so guess what Tootsie did? I built up and slept in the sky. The next day, I built a horse stable and I also put the parrots on top of it because I was scared that they were doing the monster noises, but you'll see that it wasn't them. Alex and Josh had actually managed to get out because of some bamboo and Josh enjoyed a piece of bamboo. I guess love had grown between them, because they very soon had a little baby girl named Emily. From days 24 to 30, a lot of stuff happened, so first of all I was getting a lot of horses, so I bought them all up to the stables. And then I saw that Emily was sick, and she, when she coughed, her parents would jump and it was really cute. What a lovely family. I got an alpaca and even a villager who enjoyed breakdancing. Or maybe he was having a seizure, I'm not too sure. I also got a donkey who got along very well with the horses. Ready for a heart attack? So as you can see I put some fences and thank god I did, I would have been dead there, 100% sure. I then got the villager in a safe space using a profession block, which is a technique I saw in one of PewDiePie's videos. A cool thing with one block is that you can get some spawn eggs, and I got a villager spawn egg, which meant that now I could breed my villagers and get loads of them. I got two more alpacas and I bought them over to the stables and then there was a monster party but thankfully I had put a fence so they couldn't come and get me. That was when I met Jeff. Jeff was not like the others, he was kind and respectful. He was honestly such a chill guy so I spent the rest of the afternoon with him. Two bullies spawned and I was afraid that I would hurt Jeff, but thankfully I got rid of them. The next morning I happily ran down to see Jeff and I knew we would spend the day together and it would be great and... Honestly, I kinda knew he would despawn at one point, but it was still quite disappointing. I found a cat and tamed him, and that cheered me up a bit. I started trading with Patrick the farmer to get some more emeralds. Then that big guy spawned, and I knew that if I accidentally hit him, he would instantly kill me, so I got him out, and then I decorated with some bushes, and he got back in. Yeah, I'm terrible with bushes. And I know that every time I put bushes, it's a problem. I've seen it in the comments, but I don't know, I really like putting bushes everywhere. It was now time for me to build the monster spawner, so I knew I would need a lot of wood. So yeah, basically the next few days I did a lot of wood cutting and building. By the way, if any of you are wondering when 
the next episode of my let's play will be i will be posting it in one week on monday the 31st of may so to get back onto what i was doing i actually was running out of wood so i even cut down the tree that was in the animal pen on day 40 the mob farm was finally done so I went up to take out the lights and honestly I hate that moment I'm always super stressed even though the mobs actually take some time to uh, spawn but yeah that's just me at first nothing was spawning so I was a bit worried and I went off and guess what when I came back I was shocked <laughs> really I have never seen so many mobs in a mob farm the next day I saw Tom's head sticking through the door that was quite funny and then if you're wondering why I'm building a horrible looking house and a platform it was because I had entered the nether phase I didn't have a very large choice of blocks, so I kind of used random ones and I thought it was quite funny that it looked awful. I even found a black cat and in France it's a sign of bad luck and I know that apparently in England it's good luck. But we're gonna go with the French for this one because I don't think the nether phase will be that good. Oh wait, I take back what I said, there is some netherite. Yeah, let's go with the English. A piglin spawned and I was hoping to trade gold with him, but he died because he was on a magma block. On day 46, some magma cubes spawned and I actually think they're quite entertaining to kill. I don't know why I like that moment. And by the way, my wooden fence is completely useless in that phase. <laughs> Everything can go over it. I started getting some obsidian, which meant that I could soon be able to do an enchanting table. At one point, a baby hoglin spawned and it basically zombified and I killed it. Yeah, that wasn't an amazing moment. One thing I wasn't really looking forward to was the blazes, because my whole island is made out of wood, so I was really afraid that they would burn everything. A good thing was that I made great use of my ugly house. I mean, I really felt safe in it. On day 47, something spawned and it scared me, but actually, it was a daddy strider and his baby. I felt really bad for them because they kept chilling, they were really cold and I didn't have any lava for them. Instead, I decided to bring them up to see the horses and I even gave them a campfire, which was completely useless. It didn't warm them up at all. Oh, and that horse tried to escape, but I was too quick for him. To prevent all the animals from taking damage from the campfire, I decided to build a wall around it. I knew the campfire was useless, but I don't know, I thought it could help. On day 48, I had to kill some cows because I needed the leather for making bookshelves. I decided to place the enchanting table on the upstairs terrace. And I really got lucky. One of my first enchants was Fortune 3. I even managed to get power 4 on my bow. I even got a grindstone to get rid of enchantments I didn't like. On day 49 I punched a few monsters and then I went to see the striders. For a bit of fun, I got my dogs up and I let them chase a wither skeleton. I thought it was quite funny to watch him run about. To congratulate them, I gave them a bit of steak. And now the moment I dreaded above all, ghasts. As soon as I opened the door, the gas would send fireballs at me, so 
I opened the door very quickly and just shot one arrow and I don't know how, but I got it. It's even dropped a gas tear, so that was pretty cool. Two piglins spawned, so I was hoping I could trade gold with them, but one died on a magma block and the other zombified. And I don't know why, but I put him into like a little glass box like you see in the museums. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but honestly, he seemed okay, so I guess that's all that counts. Oh, and I think that was instant karma for what I did to the piglin. And that gas disappeared just as I shot an arrow. On day 52, I got a few magma blocks, and then there was a monster party, so I knew that wasn't good, and I tried to shoot at a ghast, and once again, it disappeared. All that was left was a blaze, and it was kind of difficult to kill the blazes because they could just, you know, fly and fall into nothing. On day 53, my fence finally had some worth. Two hoglins spawn and they could actually hit me even if I was, you know, behind the fence. When some blazes spawned, I decided to hide behind the piglin glass box because they couldn't see me. But when I tried to attack them, they kind of burnt out some parts of the place, so that was really cool. And guess what? I completely forgot I had a bow and that I could shoot at them from a distance. Yeah. Typical Tootsie. I then worked a bit on the piglin's display case, which in French you would call a vitrine. Of course, I then got some ghasts and I had a bit of shooting practice. Ghasts are actually pretty good for that. Then, guess who showed up? The mummy strider, so I bought her up to her family. On day 54, my dogs attacked some wither skeletons and one of them got hurt so I quickly gave him some steak and he even had a baby. On day 55, I tried getting the golem out and guess what? I accidentally hit him. I got so lucky I immediately ran out. Yeah, and he didn't seem too happy. At one point, I was getting a bit sad that my pond was completely empty, so I took two volunteer chickens and I bought them over. I also bought a sheep over because a pond can't be a pond without water sheep in it. I got two more piglins and I was hoping to put them in a display case, but they actually despawned really quickly. Once again, two hoglins completely bullied me from the other side of the fence. I tried to get my revenge, but the hoglin was like, no way. The next day, I got a turtle egg. That meant it was my last chance to get a turtle. I went to the pond and I built a little fence with a block of sand in the middle and a roof so that the eggs would be nice and safe. I then remembered I had a trident, so I decided to show it off and yeah. A blaze spawned and I thought, one blaze, it can't be that bad, but I could not have been more wrong. It started off by me catching fire and honestly that wasn't too bad and then I turned around and I realized the farm was on fire. My first thought was to save the animals, but I caught fire and that almost killed me. Once I was safe, I quickly extinguished the fire to save the remaining animals. The sound of all the animals burning was honestly not nice to hear. But on the bright side, I had cooked steak. 
It was really difficult to build the fence back up because all the animals were running everywhere, but then I got a bunch of eggs and I repopulated the farm. The next day I got a bucket of lava, which meant that I could now do a cobblestone generator. I had now entered the idle phase, which was honestly great because there were some bees. The only problem was that the bees would simply fly off in the void and just get stuck there. They, would, they wouldn't die, but they wouldn't come back up, so that was a bit strange. This phase also spawns some angry bees and some slimes. Very, very scary phase. Oh, and that wandering trader kept staring at the cow and she was like, help me. In that phase, I also got some mules and a skeleton horse, thankfully with no riders. A lot of phantoms spawned and that was really good because I needed the phantom membrane to make some slow falling potions for the ender dragon fight. After hitting a bunch of mobs, I realized that there was an enderman near my house, but when I went to see, it was invisible. I could hear it and see the pink stuff, so I looked if it was under the house, and no, there is absolutely nothing under my house. I then got some more slimes, and I simply could not kill them, they were just so cute, so I let them follow me up to the horse stables, and that was really, really funny to watch, and I got them in with all the animals. By day 71, I reached the ninth phase, which was the desolate land. I remembered my terrible nether house, and I decided, why not upgrade it? I started off by demolishing everything and replacing the ground with some netherrack and some blackstone. I wanted to make two houses, so one would be a small house for the special horses, I had a zombie horse and a skeleton horse, and the second one would be for brewing potions. I wanted to make the roof entirely blue, but guess what, I didn't have enough blocks, so I used some spruce wood instead. It doesn't look that much like a nether house, but I did my best. I was actually hoping that from the front we wouldn't see the spruce too much. I didn't get any nether wood at all, so instead of making the door blue, I had to make it with dark oak. I then went to get the Strider family and they happily followed me. I put them in a nice cozy pen and I let the lava pour on them and they turn red immediately. That was really, really nice to see. I then went to get the special horses and I put them in their nether pen. I even had enough ancient debris to make a netherite chest plate. From day 77 to 81, I decided to extend the area where the villagers could go. I even made a small villager house with a bit of terracotta and some cobblestone. Of course, I had to make the hedge much higher so that the villagers wouldn't escape. I even planted some savanna trees to make the place look more exotic. After a bit of morning mob punching, I decided to go back mining and I got some more diamonds. I even got a few little poisonous spiders that I killed immediately. Then a charged creeper spawned and I'm not gonna lie, I've never came across one so I wanted to know how much damage it could do. In another world, I lured a creeper over to a village and yeah, it 
does some damage. Of course, after seeing that, I was very, very careful when I killed it. Sadly, it didn't drop a creeper head, even though I had looting three on my sword. That night, I got protection four on my chest plate. In the next monster party, an evoker spawned, accompanied by his awful vexes. When I hit him, he actually fell into the void, so I didn't get the totem of undying. Then, these three guys spawned, and they were quite funny to watch. And I'm not sure why I kept that part in the video. Another charge creeper spawned, and I knew exactly what to do. And yet, he didn't drop a head either. Another evoker spawned, and this time, I was going to get the totem of undying. I managed to kill the evoker from a distance, but then one of his vexes attacked me, but I managed to kill it. And I had it, the totem of undying. Honestly, that made me so much more confident for the Ender Dragon fight. I got the skeleton trio again, so that wasn't really complicated, and one was watching the panda, so I let him live. Just kidding. I got some blue dye in a chest, so immediately I went to dye water sheet blue. I then decorated the panda enclosure with some flowers, and don't ask me why there's a sheep and a chicken in it. That helmet had really, really good enchantments. From day 91 to 98, it was the end phase. A lot of endermites spawned and they were really easy to get rid of with the sweeping edge. The best way to get leads from the wandering trader is to kill the lamas first so that they don't spit on you. I harvested and replanted some nether warts that I would be needing for making potions. Out of curiosity, I decided to make a nether portal because I was 100% sure that it wouldn't work. And guess what? It works! I felt really silly because I was struggling to find some blocks to make the nether houses and I could have simply went into the nether. Nevertheless, my goal was to defeat the ender dragon so I couldn't waste any time in the nether. Endermen started spawning so I built a little shelter to protect myself from getting any damage. As I had looting through my sword, it wasn't too hard to get some ender pearls. A shulker spawned and I killed it off very easily. This is when I learned that if you stare at an enderman and keep eye contact, it won't actually attack you. But the moment you stop, it will. I even made a little area where I put all the discs I had collected from the mob farm. I then went to see the villagers and got a few mending books, and that's when I realized that a villager was in the pond, I don't know how he got there. I then went to my nether house and I started brewing some potions of slow falling. I also made some potions of strength. If you're wondering why I have two diamond swords, it's because one had looting three and the other had sharpness four, so I put them together and put mending on it. I was finally suited up to go defeat the ender dragon, but Honestly, I was quite scared that I would never see all this world again because it's quite possible that I might die during the fight. So of course, I went to say goodbye to everyone. Day 99. Honestly, I was quite stressed, but I jumped into the portal. 
Thankfully, I didn't spawn too far from the island, so I went up and started shooting at the towers. I don't know if you've noticed, but I completely forgot to drink these slow falling potions, so if the dragon had hidden me in the air, I would be dead. I then started climbing up a tower and the dragon kept shooting at me, but I managed to destroy two crystals. And when I jumped off, I accidentally looked at an enderman who attacked me as soon as I reached the ground. When I started climbing up the last tower, the dragon shot two times at me. When the dragon flew down, I drank my strength potion and I hit it and hit it and hit it. And it actually hit me at one point. Are you ready for disaster? My slow falling potion is slowly wearing off and I have no idea. The dragon suddenly throws me in the air and I have no idea that I don't have the slow falling potion. I had only one heart left and the dragon throws me in the air another time and I'm dead. Thankfully, I have the totem of undying. I had been given a second chance and I was going to seize it. The dragon didn't have much life left, so I hit him one last time and killed him. The end was finally free. All I wanted was to get home safe, so I collected all the levels, took the egg, and went home. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. Anyways, until next time, see ya!